Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall. In an illustration, we spend so much time learning how to build stuff that we oftentimes forget how it's going to look in real life. Clients, without a doubt, want to see how artwork looks in real life. Having the skill to show them could be your tipping point between project failure and project success. So with that in mind, I've been digging around and have found some of Illustrator's classic tools to be easy and awesome. I recently did a video on laying a logo in front of a bottle. Check it out. This time around, we're going to teach you how to build the 3D object and then lay the art or logo on top of it. Yeah, that's what we're building. Along the way, I'll teach you about shading, colors, position, sizing, and a little bit more. All right, so that's what we've got for now, and it's pretty kick-ass. Let's go. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Piece of cake on creating a new document. All we need to do is go to File, New, or of course, Control N. Once our new document window has appeared, let's go ahead and go with the following dimensions. We're going to go with a thousand point width, 1000 point height. We're going to have a single artboard. And if we scroll down, let's go ahead and make sure that we're using the RGB color mode. Reason is we're going to screen, not print. If we're going to be building to print. Of course, switch on over to CMYK. Let's go ahead and create. There we go. Let's go ahead and size our artboard to occupy the entire screen. All right, before we get started, I want to go over a few things. The first thing is that we are using the Essentials Classic workspace. To switch on over to Essentials Classic, all you need to do is go to the top right hand corner of your page, select Switch Workspace, and select Essentials Classic from there. You can use any workspace you want. I choose Essentials Classic because it has all the tools that I want in an easy to find manner. That being said, if you want to use your own workspace, feel free. I'll show you how to get to any of the tools that you need. Next thing I want to mention is that we're using Smart Guides. To switch on over to Smart Guides, all you need to do, go on over to View, scroll down to Smart Guides, or select Control U. Next thing is that we're going to be using the bottom center of our page to highlight hotkey recommendations, key command recommendations, and tips and tricks. On that note, we're building this piece on a PC. If you're using a Mac or Apple device, anytime we recommend the control key, go ahead and select the command key instead. Again, command equals control. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with our piece. As you can see in the top right hand corner of your page, that's what we're going to be building. We'll get started with our rectangle tool. Let's go. We'll select our rectangle tool. We're going to hover over the middle of our artboard until we get that center aligned, just like that. Once there, let's go ahead and click a rectangle that's going to delineate the top of our piece. That looks pretty good right there. And then let's go ahead and hover over the left side of our rectangle and then click and drag down. This is going to be the neck of our bottle. That looks pretty reasonable right there. And then let's do it one more time for the body. I'm going to hover right on over the neck right there. And let's go ahead and click and drag down something like that. I think that looks pretty decent right there. Let's go ahead and release. Now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and zoom in on our piece just a little bit. We're doing that by hitting Control Plus. What we're going to do is I want a black band on the top of my bottle. How do we do that? We're going to hover over our top rectangle again. We'll click on any side or anchor point. And we'll drag out a rectangle that fits our purpose. I think that looks pretty reasonable right there. I'll release. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's deselect. That looks basically about what we want. Now we want to take all of these shapes and we want to combine them into singular shapes that we can color. How do we do that? Well, that's pretty easy. All we need to do is use our Shape Builder tool. Let's get started with that. The first thing we're going to do is with our Selection tool still selected, we're going to click and drag across all of our shapes, just like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select our Shape Builder tool. And notice as we hover over our shapes, look what happens. All the individual shapes or combined shapes highlight. What we're going to do is we're going to click and drag across the shapes that we want to combine to create a singular shape. Check it out. First thing we're going to do is we'll do our body. We'll click and drag across our body and our neck just like that. And notice that they've been combined into a single shape. Let's go ahead and do that with our top as well. I'm going to click on the top shape. That's going to be one. And then for the next two, 
we'll click and drag over our shapes. The best way to do that is to zoom in just a little bit so we can get a better look. And then we'll hover over these shapes. I'll drag across that top one, and then I'll drag across our bottom one just like that. Note if we deselect, we have got four individual shapes. We've got the top of our cap, our band, the bottom of our cap, and then the bottle itself. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to bevel our corners to get those round edges, as you can see again on the top right. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab our direct selection tool. Let's click and drag over that top corner of our bottle first. With that in mind, we've got our bevel point appearing. Let's click and pull that bevel point all the way in. So we've got a round top. Looks good right there. Next thing we want to do is we want to get the bottom corner of our top slightly round as well just gives a little bit of an impression of a soft edge. That looks pretty good right there. And then let's go ahead and make our other edges round. We'll start with our stem, click across our stem just like that. And then again, we'll pull it in just slightly. That works well right there. And then let's go ahead with the outside top. Again, we'll click across our top. We can also select that anchor point just like that. And then let's click and drag all the way in just like that. Once again, let's do it on the bottom. I'll click on that anchor point and I'll just pull it in just a little bit to give that round bottom just like that. Let's go ahead and deselect. And there you go, we've got half of our bottle as you can see. Let's go ahead and color this thing out. And then we'll go with the business of making it 3D. Check it out. First thing we're going to do is we'll grab our selection tool and let's drag across our entire shape. Now what I want to do here just to make things easy is I want to get rid of the stroke, but I want to still be able to see my shapes. The way I'll do that is I'll select my fill and I'll swap it all the way over to black just like that. Click OK. And then I'll select my stroke. I'll bring it to the front and then I'll make my stroke transparent just like this. Perfect. Now that we're done, let's go ahead and color the piece out. With our selection tool still selected, let's click on our body. Let's double click on our fill. And let's go ahead and Select a heavy blue, a good dark blue will work just fine. I think that'll be perfect right there. Let's click OK. That's what we're looking for, I think. Let's go ahead and deselect that. And then let's go ahead and select our cap. We'll start with the top. Let's double click on our fill once again. And then let's go ahead and find a yellow that's kind of close to gold. I think that looks pretty good right at the top. I think that works. Let's click OK. And then let's go ahead and deselect this. And let's go ahead and select our band right here. Now, I wanted it black, but there are a few instances when black is absolute. So what I want to do is I want to take that black and bring it up to a dark gray. So we'll double click on our film. Let's take that black and pull it up to about there. Notice how it's just a dark gray right now. Let's click OK. And we are close. Let's deselect that. Let's select the bottom of our cap. And let's grab the eyedropper tool to make things easy. Let's select that. Let's click on the top of our cap. Let's grab our selection tool. Let's go ahead and deselect. That's exactly what we want. Now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and get to the business of making this 3D. How do I do that? With our selection tool still selected, let's group this together. We're going to click and drag from top left to bottom right, just like that. Let's go to Object, Group, or Control G. You can also right click on the object and select Group. That being said, let's go ahead and make this piece 3D. How do we do that? Piece of cake. Let's go ahead and close this window out right here. Let's go ahead and select our appearance window. All you need to do is go to the right toolbar and select appearance right here and the window comes up. Or there are a couple other ways to do it as well. Let's go ahead and close this out. You can go to window, appearance, or of course select shift F6. Click OK. There we go. Before we get started, let's bring our entire artboard into view. The way we do that is we'll select control zero. And there we go. You can see the whole piece right there. Once that's done, let's get started in playing. With our piece still selected, let's go ahead and select effects from our appearance window. Let's select 3D and materials. And let's go ahead and hover over 3D classic. Next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and select revolve classic. And right away, you'll notice that we've got a 3D object. That's how easy it is. Piece of cake. Well, let's customize this piece just a little bit before we get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to change our position from off axis front to front. That brings a front view just like that. And then let's play with it. What I want to do is I want to have a front view, but I want to be looking down on my bottle. How do I do that? 
Check it out. I'll select my top element right there. And if I use my directional keys, notice if I arrow up, what happens? I'll release it at about 16. And now I'm looking up at the object. So what if we did it to a negative number? What we can do is we can take it down to negative 20. Again, we can either enter negative 20 or we can just use our directional keys. That's what I'll do right now. Notice I'll arrow down. We'll go to a negative number. Take it to negative 20. And you can see we've got our bottle set so that we're looking down on it from center. If we want to get it even more 3D, we can add some perspective. In this case, I'll select my perspective right here. I'll drag across it and I'll write 50 degrees. Watch what happens. I'll tab off of it. And that's really starting to look good right there. Let's go ahead and select OK and take a look at our piece after we deselect. There you go. Without much effort, we have created a 3D perfume bottle. So I've got a couple more things to do here to make this thing look really fresh. First of all, I want to add a logo to it. Second of all, I want to change my light source just a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and grab our logo. Let's go ahead and open up our Snowflake logo or any logo you've got. By the way, if you want this logo, piece of cake on getting it. All you need to do is navigate to the URL at the bottom center right here. Go ahead and grab it and download the Snowflake logo from here. Once you've got it and opened up, all you need to do is the following. Let's grab our selection tool right here. We'll click on our logo. We'll go edit, copy, or control C. Let's go ahead and open up our new document right here. And let's go ahead and paste our element right in here. Let's go edit, paste, or control V. And there you go, there is our artwork. Now before we do anything with this particular bit of artwork, let's go ahead and scale it down. Let's do it the easy way. Let's double click on our scale tool. And let's make sure our preview is selected and let's use our directional keys one more time to get our logo down to size. We'll arrow down and notice how our logo scales. Now what we want is we want our logo to be approximately the same width as our bottle. That looks pretty good right there and that'll serve as a good starting point. You can also enter in the number again. We took it down to 21%. I think that works pretty good right there. Let's click OK. Now that we've got that, Let's go ahead and take a few more steps. Let's close the appearance window real quick here. And let's open up our symbols window right here. You just click right here, open it up. If you wanna use your Windows tab, all you need to do is click on Window, Symbols, or of course, Shift Control F11. Once we've got that, we need to grab our selection tool and let's click and drag our artwork into the symbols window just like that. Once that's done, notice, our symbol options window pops up. Let's go ahead and rename this logo. And then let's change our export type from movie clip to graphic. And then let's select as symbol type, static symbol. Once we're done with that, let's click OK. And let's go ahead and deselect our shape. Now that we're looking at this, check it out. We've got our logo in two separate places. We've got one on the page and we've got one in our symbols window. If we want to edit our symbol, all we need to do is double click on it. And you'll notice our symbol is located right there and we can edit it as follows. Let's go ahead and go back to our main page right here. Since we've already got our artwork existing in one place, we don't need it on the main page. We'll bring it in, don't worry. Let's go ahead and grab this. Let's go ahead and delete it. And let's get started on adding this into our bottle. Let's go. Let's go ahead and close our symbols window. We don't need that right now. Let's go ahead and open up our appearance window. And then let's go ahead with our selection tool still selected. Let's click on our bottle. Let's go ahead and select 3D Revolve Classic. With our piece still open, let's go ahead and select Map Art. All right, now that our Map Art window is open, notice the red elements on the page. That is the area that is being mapped right now that we can add art to. What we want to do is we want to add our art to the main area of the bottle, that bottom center part. So how do we do that? Well, all we need to do is click through our surfaces until the surface that we want to map to is red. Check it out. There we go, that is the surface that we wanna to map to. All we need to do is add the symbol. So let's go ahead and do that. With our symbol here, all we need to do is click and select logo and check out what happens. Right away, you'll notice that our logo is mapped to that surface. However, half of it is visible, the other half is not. Why? 
because you'll notice if you look at our map art window that half of our art is residing in the dark part. That means it is not in the visible part of our bottle. How do we fix that? Piece of cake, all we need to do is click and drag our artwork to the center part of our visible area, our lighter area. Notice what happens straight away is that our artwork is now located at the center. Now this looks really good, but we wanna scale it down a little bit. It's just a little bit too big. So how do we do that? We wanna scale it down and we wanna move it just a little bit higher. So how do we do that? Let's hold our shift key and let's click on any corner of our artwork. We're gonna click and we're gonna drag it up just a little bit. That looks pretty good right there. That looks a lot better right there. And then let's go ahead and center it and move it up to the top of our window, just like that. That's exactly where we want it to be. All right, now that we've got our artwork position, we wanna do something more. First thing is, let's go ahead and shade our artwork. Let's click on this button right here. And you can see now our artwork is shaded along with the rest of our bottle. What happens if we click on invisible geometry? Well, you can imagine. Well, it's not what we want, check it out. Let's click on it and notice our geometry, that bottle becomes invisible. That's handy in a lot of ways, but for this purpose, not quite. So let's make it visible again. And let's click OK. Let's click OK one more time and let's go ahead and deselect our shape. That looks really good and we could stop there if we really wanted to, but there are a couple things that we need to do. We wanna change the direction of our light source just to make it a little bit more centered. Second of all, we wanna change the color of our shading so that it's not black to white. We wanna make sure that the blue is sort of reflected in our shading a little bit, make it more lifelike. And second of all, we wanna add more steps to our shading so it does not look as staggered. Let's go ahead and zoom in and show you. If you look at it, you can see the staggering of our shading. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go ahead and select our piece right now. Perfect. Let's go ahead and select 3D Revolve Map Classic. Excellent. And now from our 3D Revolve Options window, let's click on More Options. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and play just a little bit. First thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and change the shading. Right here on this ball right here, let's click and drag it towards the top center so that we can see a little bit more of a direct shading. That looks perfect right there. Next thing we wanna do is let's go ahead and change the blend steps so we've got a smoother shading gradient. Let's change it from 25 to 50. Let's tab off of it. That's a little bit smoother right there. And then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna change our shading color from black to something a little bit more appropriate. In this case, we'll shade it from a dark blue. Here's how you do that. Let's click on black and let's select custom. What it's going to do is default to red. That definitely doesn't work. Let's change our shading color from the default. Let's click on our color. And with our color picker window up, let's go ahead and select a blue and let's take that blue to a really dark blue, just like that. About like that, close to black, but not quite. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. Let's click OK. Yeah, that looks absolutely outstanding. Let's go ahead and click OK. Let's deselect our shape. And let's bring our entire page into view. That looks outstanding right there. Now go ahead and experiment. We are done. Nice job. Now like I always say, dig in, push your boundaries, and see what you can do. Check out what I did right here. Skateboard wheel. Pretty rad. Or check this out. In the next video, I'm going to teach you how to build an opaque bottle or shape or whatever and then lay a logo on top of it that's not opaque. All right, now that we've got that covered, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.